Welcome to Mikon's hardware. After my previous test where I have demonstrated that Core i3-12100 is actually beating Xeon EFA 2696v3 and Xeon EFA 2667v4 in gaming conditions, many X99 owners and X99 supporters would get upset with me and complain that I have done unfair tests where Core i3-12100 has an upper hand compared to the Xeon E5 CPUs. And that's because I have used expensive Z690 motherboard and expensive DDR4 3200 CL14 memory. So, instead of arguing with these X99 believers, I decided to do more tests, and in this case I'm going to use this particular computer that I have assembled to one of my customers. Inside this computer I have got Huanan GH610M ITX motherboard, by the way, review of this motherboard is already available on my channel. Then I pair it with the two sticks of 8GB Corsair DDR4 3200CL16 memory. These are dirty cheap DDR4 memory sticks compared to my standard G-Skill DDR4 3200CL14 memory modules. It's also important to mention that here we have only two sticks, so we have 16GB in total compared to the 32GB in total from the previous test. And finally, in this computer, to cut the budget, I had to use Intel Box cooler instead of an expensive Noctua NHD15 CPU cooler. As you can see, this PC uses the cheapest components possible for this platform. I really hoped to get some sort of a meaningful and different results to be able to explore which games are benefiting from memory performance more or less, but reality is that with the AMD RX 5700 XT, memory performance is almost irrelevant. On average, across these tested games, configuration with the H610 motherboard is less than 1 FPS slower than uh, configuration with the Z690 motherboard. And here it's important to mention that the biggest gap I have seen was in Far Cry 6 game, it's 5 FPS, and here actually H610 configuration is faster. This could be because uh, MSI Z690 motherboard that I use by default uses Command Trait 2 when I enable XMP profile with my G-Skill memory modules, while Huanan GH610M motherboard with my Corsair modules by default uses Command Trait 1. Since I'm testing the stock configuration with no manual tuning and no manual overclocking, I use the default XMP settings. And if one memory kit is defaulting to command rate 2, I use command rate 2. If another kit uses command rate 1, I use command rate 1. In the future, if I will have desire, I may explore the performance difference when using command rate 1 and command rate 2, but for now we have these results and both of the configurations are stock. The only thing I have done is enabled XMP profile in the BIOS, in both cases. Thus, as you can see, the results are pretty even and pretty boring, and even if you're using the cheapest components with the Core i3-12100, it is still faster than Xeon E5-2696 V3 and Xeon E5-2667 V4. These results can be explained if we take a look at the ADA64 memory performance with these two configurations. In both cases, the numbers are pretty close, and of course, uh, DDR4 3200CL14 would have slightly less latency compared to DDR4 3200CL16, but because one uses command rate 2 and another one uses command rate 1, we also see slight deviations in performance, and in some cases, H610 configuration is actually a bit better. And with these results, I hope it is finally clear why I always recommend my subscribers and my customers to try to find the cheapest H610 motherboard and use i3-12100 or i5-12400 instead of the Chinese X99 motherboards with the old Xeon E5 CPUs. Only if the LJ1700 components are overpriced in your region or they are simply out of stock, only then I would recommend to go with the Chinese X99 motherboard and the old Xeon E5 CPUs. And that's probably all I have for you for this video. I hope it was helpful and I hope I have answered those unhappy X99 questions. So thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope to see you in the next one, bye bye.